This work was funded by uh, the NIA at the National Institutes uh, for Health and by the uh, Hilton Foundation. I want to acknowledge uh, my co-authors, Virat Agarwal from USC, uh, Jonathan Cantor, and Chris Bailey from the RAND Corporation. So uh, why look at shelter in place policies and excess mortality? Uh, so if you if you can remember a year, uh, you know, when the pandemic just started, shelter in place policies uh, were were sold on the premise that uh, they can flatten the curve. Uh, so if you reduce social interactions, you can reduce the number of uh, COVID cases in the population and you can bring them down below health system capacity. And in that process, uh, prevent, make sure everyone gets the health care they need and, and prevent uh, COVID deaths. Uh, so that was kind of the, uh, the original idea behind shelter in place. And some early research did show that shelter in place uh, did exactly that, that it was associated with a uh, decline in, in COVID cases or, or deaths. Uh, but more recent research by economists uh, shows that shelter in place might not work as well as we think because in the face of a pandemic people don't do do nothing they actually respond to the pandemic and they might change their behavior prior to implementation of a policy and in that case the effect of the policy would be dampened because people decided to stay at home or not go to bars and restaurants even before the policy uh, was implemented. Uh, so that's, that's one reason why it's important to look at the effects of this policy in real life and not just in a mathematical model where we are comparing these policies to uh, doing nothing or assuming no change in behavior. Uh, the other thing that can happen is when you relax shelter in place, people will respond by resuming their, their social interactions. Uh, so instead of just preventing cases, what you might be doing is, is just delaying cases. Uh, so for example, in Los Angeles, where I'm from, uh, there was a huge second surge in cases in November. And, and that might be just people kind of, you know, getting tired of the shelter in place policies, resuming social interactions and cases going up. So it's important to kind of look at the long-term effects, not just what happens in a few weeks after these policies, but maybe a few months after these uh, policies are, are implemented. Uh, the other thing that can happen is that these policies can have effects on your health, not just on COVID risk, but through a variety of other mechanisms. Uh, so uh, this is actually the cover of uh, the British Medical Journal, which is one of the oldest uh, peer-reviewed journals. And you can see that uh, the small kind of blue box on the left corner is the mortality directly attributable to COVID, which is you get COVID, you end up in the hospital and you might die. But all the other kind of things in orange are mortality coming from other causes. So they could be because of non-COVID care being displaced. So if you have chest pain and you don't go see your doctor, you might die of a heart attack at home. It could be because of social isolation. You could have depression. Uh, it, it could be because of social disorder. If you're at home and you have nothing to do, you might go outside uh, and do social disorder. It could be because of physical inactivity, uh, abuse, and so on. Uh, so it's important not just to look at COVID mortality, but to look at mortality from all causes, because there could be a variety of different channels through which shelter-in-place policies could be affecting uh, your health. So just to kind of give you some example, we did find you know, the first cause, which is displacing non-COVID care. We did another paper, uh, and we found there were big reductions in screening for cancer, like colonoscopies and mammograms. Uh, big reductions in monitoring your HbA1c, which is uh, you know monitoring your diabetes, big reductions in in vaccinations. And what we showed in another NBER working paper is some of these reductions were related to shelter in place policies. so 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 basically, the point is, look, in theory, these policies could work by reducing COVID cases and COVID deaths. But in theory, 
you know, there could be many other consequences of these policies like displacing non-COVID related care, mental health and so on. And so we really need to bring data to this to see what was going on. And, and that's what we did. So we basically uh, looked at uh, the experience of different countries when they implemented shelter in place policies, as well as different states within the US when they implemented shelter in place policies. And we used data from the Oxford University COVID-19 government response tracker, which tracked shelter in place policies when they were implemented in each state and country. And then we used uh, data from our world and data, which you know goes to the human mortality database uh, to track excess deaths. And by excess deaths, we basically mean deaths during the pandemic or 2020 compared to the average deaths in the previous five years when we didn't have the pandemic. And these are all cause uh, mortality. Uh, so we started with like simple descriptive analysis. So each dot here is a country. And for each country, we figured out the date of the first COVID death. That was the start of the pandemic in that country. We looked at the next six months after the first COVID death and said, for how many of this, how, what duration of this time did you have a shelter in place policy at work? That's on the X axis. And on the Y axis is during this duration, what does excess mortality look like? And what we find in this simple cross-section analysis is that the longer the duration of shelter in place policies, uh, the higher the excess mortality. So there is no evidence here that you know, shelter in place policies reduce excess mortality. Uh, you could argue that maybe it's not the duration that matters, it's the speed. So if you implement these policies early on, that's when you save lives. And this, this graph basically shows uh, that, that that's not the case. We still find that same positive association where uh, countries who implemented the policy earlier, uh, we don't see uh, a huge, uh, you know, gain from, from implementing that. Uh, and we find the same experience when we look at US states, uh, that duration or speed of shelter in place policies uh, doesn't seem to matter much. Uh, but all of this is descriptive analysis. And you could argue that, you know, these states not only differ in terms of when they implemented or how long they implemented shelter in place policies, they differ around many other dimensions. Similarly, countries differ among many other dimensions. So this simple cross-sectional analysis uh, might have omitted variable bias or might be missing some of those factors. Uh, so to address that, what we did was an event study where we look at within a US state or within a country and then, and then basically track excess mortality after the implementation of shelter-in-place policies and and prior to implementation of shelter-in-place policies. Uh, so the graph on the left-hand side shows the event study results from the cross-country comparison. And what you find is after, so time period zero is when shelter-in-place policies are implemented. And the, in the weeks after shelter-in-place policies are implemented, there is a trend towards rising excess deaths. Uh, we find a similar pattern in, in US states, even though in the US states towards week 20, excess deaths starts, uh, start declining. And uh, the positive coefficient for US states are not statistically significant. As you can see, the 95% confidence interval overlaps with zero. Uh, but for the international comparison, the positive coefficients are actually statistically uh, different from zero, that the confidence intervals are, are higher than zero. Uh, so, so these data show that even when we kind of look within states, which can account for this omitted variable or within countries, we still find this pattern that uh, shelter in place policies led to higher excess debts rather than uh, lower excess debts. Uh, but then you can say, okay, Neeraj, that's great. But what about the fact that stringency of policies might vary across countries? So what we're getting is the average effect uh, maybe these policies really work when uh, you implement a strict version of the policies. Or, or what if, uh, you know, you're kind of grouping all these countries together, uh, maybe some countries that implemented policies early in the pandemic, uh, you know, these policies might work then. Or what economists call that the timing of these policies might be endogenous. So you might have implemented these policies when there was already a trend towards 
rising debt. And, and that's why you kind of find it's a continuation of that trend rather than a break in that trend. Uh, so we try to you know, address uh, some of these possibilities. Uh, so the first thing is that the event study actually tells us what, what the trend in excess debts were prior to implementation of these policies. And what you find is that in the international comparison, actually there was a trend towards declining excess mortality in countries that implemented shelter in place policies. So in some sense, if that trend had continued, you should find we are biased towards finding that ex, you know, excess mortality reduces when you implement shelter in place policies. And in fact, what we find is that the trend is reversed. So the dots were kind of going down till zero, and now the dots kind of start going up after shelter in place is implemented. In US states, we really don't see any kind of big trend that looks flat, and then it starts going up after shelter in place is implemented. Uh, we also try to kind of uh, split this into uh, countries where uh, there was higher than uh, median uh, COVID debt prior to implementation of the policies versus below median. And again, you can see there's no pre-existing trend, but after the policies are implemented, there's a trend towards uh, increasing mortality. And then finally, what we did was we said, you know, let's just look at the same chart for each country and for each state. And let's see, do we find any evidence for a particular country that these policies work, that they actually reduced excess mortality after the policy was implemented. And the only evidence we find is in Australia, New Zealand, and Malta, where these policies seem to have a protective effect. And all of these countries happen to be islands. Uh, so maybe there is some, uh, some link there. And similarly, when we look at across US states, the only state where we find an effect is in Hawaii, which also happens to be an island. Uh, so maybe there is something to do with, you know, islands, this works in islands, but maybe not in, um, in other places. Uh, so in conclusion, what we find is, even though in theory, shelter in place policies seem like a good idea, uh, we don't find any, any evidence that they have reduced excess debts. Uh, so given that, maybe going forward, a better strategy might be to focus on vaccinations, and therapeutics for controlling the pandemic rather than trying to shut down the economy or asking people to uh, stay at home. And, and more general, the lesson from you know, this kind of economic research is any policy, we should be evaluating what the long-term consequences of the policy are and thinking both about kind of the intended as well as unintended consequences of the policy. Uh, thank you.